Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. We are planting in the garden today. We're going to talk about corn beets. All right, guys, this is a new thing for our garden this year, and we are very excited to have this beautiful item to add and to grow. These are corn beads, and a lot of people ask about this, and I want to show you what creations that are made within um, the Cherokee culture with the corn beads. This is very important to Cherokee culture, and uh, we are just loving having these items that were given to us to grow in our own special garden. So let's talk about it. All right, guys, if you see here, you're gonna see some beautiful beadwork and necklaces from Miss Lou Jackson, who is coming to the Great Appalachian Homesteading Conference. She is bringing these, she's bringing a bunch. She is hand making beautiful creations for you for May 25th, check it out. So this is just a hand, I just grabbed a few to show you some of these beautiful creations that she has. And if you notice, the mainstay and main focus of every necklace is, of course, a corn bead. These are very, very important, like I said before, to Cherokee culture. And they make beautiful jewelry pieces. You can dress it up and dress it down as you want to. So I want to talk about the particulars of these because I didn't know a lot of this until I got my hands on them and was shown what to do. So the corn bead grows. It's like a plant. And it creates these beautiful little, they look like little beads, don't they? They're actually very similar to a corn kernel as well. And you can see that every single one is absolutely different. Now, if you look into the history and the story and the lore and the legend of the corn bead, it goes back and it takes you back to the Trail of Tears. The story has it that everywhere that tears fell during the Trail of Tears, that a plant actually grew. And so that is how you then began to get these. Now, some folks call them Job's Tears. You've probably seen that, um, but we, we just call them corn beads. So now here's the thing. Now, they're, they, they apparently, <laughs> we're going to find out, once you plant them, they're forever giving. So I'm looking forward to that. So we've, we've picked some very special places to plant them. Now, what you see here is like the whole kernel in a sense. The actual seed itself is inside. So do you see how they, right here, they, they don't have that because they're strong. But in order to string them, you have to clean them. And so Miss Lou taught me how to clean corn bead. It's pretty simple. You're going to take the bead right here. You see that? You see that right there? And then you have this little thing poking up out of the top. That's the actual seed. That's what you have right here, okay? So you're going to take tweezers. Sometimes, I can't do this one-handed, sometimes you can simply pull the seed out. But sometimes they're a little bit stubborn. So then what you'll have to do is have a needle. Let me get this. And what I do is I will come along um, like the back side of it and kind of poke it through. And then you'll start to gently pull the actual seed out. Once you then have um, the seed out, which you see right here, those are the seeds. And then these are like clean, these are cleaned beads. You can see where I've already poked. It's getting a little fuzzy, guys. And poked and pulled. So that way, they, they, so you have like the kernel, the actual bead right there. That's great for, you know, making the jewelry pieces. The seeds you can then replant, okay? So if you want to keep the actual kernels, that is what you'll have. That's what you'll do. Some folks don't do that. They'll just, if they've got an abundance, what they'll do is they'll take these and literally just spread them out in the ground. You can soak them a little bit. Some folks I've seen have soaked them, and then they'll just, you know, put them in the ground and let them grow. But if you want the seeds separate from the kernels, that's what you'll do. You'll then take your clippers. Some folks say that they'll take the clippers, your fingernail clippers, and then they'll just clip the end once they pull the seed out just to make it a little bit more even and not so rough right there. And that way it's just a little bit easier for stringing and evenness on your beadwork, just like so. So what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, one area outside and we are going to be planting these. I may actually create two different areas um, because these are very, very special. Um, and they were um, given to me as a gift, and we want to keep that uh, sacred tradition going, and we want to be able to give back because, again, they make beautiful jewelry. All right, guys, so we're out here in the garden. 
We've got some weeding to do and some mounding to do. We have all these potatoes. Check that out. Oh my goodness. The first patch of corn we've done in a block row has come up. It's been about two weeks, so now we've got to finish. So that's what we've done there. We'll extend that. We're going to be doing beans. We're also going to be doing mounds with squash um, and pumpkins. And we're going to finish out our corn and lots of sunflowers. We definitely want a lot of pollinators. Pollinators love beautiful corn and sunflowers. So, but this special section is going to be for the corn beads. Now, I'm going to split hairs. I'm going to do it down here. And the reason I decided to is because my chickens don't get down in this area. And then we're going to be doing it at the front area of the house as well. So, we've made a basic trench. I'm going to lightly sprinkle them in and cover and uh, we're going to see how they do, really praying for a great harvest. All right, so technically I guess you should kind of do them a little bit as far as distance, but since this is just a big handful and we're just hoping for something, we can always weed them later. So I'm just going to sprinkle them in along the line. Some of these look like they're just holes. They may not have full seeds in them. so. Doubling up is probably a good idea. This is a great shot because it shows you how they're dried on the plant. Look here. Right there, there, there it is right there. So this is it, right there she is. Right there. How perfect is that? Okay, I'm just gently covering. And I'll go back with the topsoil and a little bit of a covering. We'll see how they come up. I didn't do, like I said, the four inches apart, four to six inches. We're just going for it. See what comes up, and I'll thin out whatever I need to once I see it. And I'm going to treat it just the same as I do my corn, which I'm about to take care of. So, we appreciate y'all watching here at Appalachia's Homestead. If you're coming to the Great Appalachian Homesteading Conference, do know that we're going to have beautiful items from very, a lot of very special people. Miss Lou is coming. Uh, we also have Eric Oswald. We have we're going to have three tables of Cherokee pottery, corn bead necklaces. Remember that all veterans, all active military are free for our event on May 25th. I'm going to finish up. It's getting hot. We're ready for a wonderful season. We'll see you on the next video.